Hey everybody, in this video from week one problems, we're going to prove something that is remarkably useful. Uh, you'd be surprised how often we're going to use it, uh, not just sort of in the literal sense. So we're proving here that, that function composition satisfies the associativity law, uh, but uh, for example, towards the end of the semester, when uh, we start looking at uh, groups, uh, very often we're going to want to show that a collection of function forms a group. And the fact that function composition is associative, right, gives us actually one of the group axioms. Um, but it also means that if we can show that maybe something that doesn't look like a function is a function, uh, then we can actually use this rule to get associativity of whatever binary operation it is uh, in play. So in any case, let's get to the, the actual proof. So first, we, we better write down a statement here. So let's recall what it means for function composition to be associative. Uh, so let's say I have some function, and I'm going to draw them from right to left so that I don't have to keep reordering in my mind my, my functions. Uh, I have some function map uh, call it f from r to s, and then maybe I have another function map g from s to t, and then I have a third function map from uh, t to, I don't know, let's say u, and we'll call that function h. All right, so uh, one thing, of course, that we could do is compose this function from uh, r to t, right? So we have this f, and then we do a g, but we could also do the composition function from R to T. Uh, of course, after we do that, then we have this map H. And so in total, we could compose a map from R to T with a map from T to U. So we end up with H composed with G circle F as a map going from R to U. On the other hand, we can also compose this map from S to U, right? The one that goes from S to T and then from T to U. So we compose H with G, and that'll give us a map from S to U. And then we could compose the map from R to S, followed by this map from S to U. And so that'll give us a second way of getting from R to U, namely, you first do F, and then you do this map H composed with G. Again, that'll be a map from R to U. And so the statement of uh, the composition being associative is, is just saying that these are the same map from R to U. Okay, so the theorem is that H composed with G composed F is equal to H composed G composed with F. So first question, of course, when you're trying to prove something is what does it mean? So we have two functions. And the claim is that they're equal. So for two functions to be equal, so two functions are equal if they, well, one, have the same domain, two, they have the same codomain, and three, they take on the same values on all elements of the domain. So they output the same value for the same input. Okay, now in this case, we're really solid on number one and number two. They both have domain R and codomain U. So all we got to check now is whether or not when you put in the same value into the functions, we get the same value out of the functions. Okay, so let's, let's give it a try. So the inputs are elements of R. So for our proof, we better start by saying let X be an element of R. All right, so how about we'll start with this function on the left. So we have H composed with G composed F. So what happens when we apply this to the function X? 
So the way you compose functions is you first apply this function g composed f and then the function h. So we'll do h of g composed f of x. Okay, so we first apply the function g circle f. Once we've done that, we get some element and we're going to apply h to it. Okay, but what does it mean to apply g circle f to x? Well, this means you first apply f to the function, or to the element x, and then you apply g to whatever that output was. Okay, so this h didn't change here, right? I'm just playing around with what's on the inside. This g circle f turned into g of f of x. So that means that if we apply h composed with the function g composed with f to x, we get h of g of f of x. All right, now let's try the right-hand side. So if I'm going to compose f with h composed g and evaluate this at x, this says first you apply f to x. Okay, so I apply f to x, and then you're going to apply this map h composed g to f of x. Okay, but what does it mean to apply h composed g to f of x? It means first you apply g to f of x. So we apply g to f of x, and then you apply h to that result. And looking up and down, we notice we're getting the exact same element. So we have just shown that when we put in the same element into both functions, we get the same output. So these are, these are both equal. All right, and that's what we needed, right? That finishes off the proof. We've shown they have the same domains. We have, they have the same codomains. And if you put in the same elements, you get out the same elements, okay? Now, it is very easy to do this wrong, and it will almost always come down to not understanding the definition of composition of functions, right? And how to actually translate what you see here into the next step and into the next step. All right, so if you're getting stuck, that's probably why, right? Go back, understand what this definition is, right, for doing the composition, right? Namely that G composed F evaluated on X is equal to G of F of X. That is going to be absolutely key for working these kind of problems.